So today we're going to do uh, a, a final exam review. I'm going to work uh, several problems. The exam will be Friday, December 11th from 7.30 to 10 p.m. So take a look at the announcement that I sent out via Canvas. It has all the details in there. The material will be mostly focusing on op amps through the end of the course. But of course you need to know the earlier material in order to work the later material. So, so be sure to have an understanding of the earlier material. Uh, practice problems and review problems are posted online. I'll also post the slides that I'm going to show uh, today that I worked through in class. So if you have any questions, be sure to uh, unmute and ask your question. Otherwise, please stay muted to uh, keep the background noise low. Okay, so I, what I'd like to do is work some final final exam review problems and do these in the form of a uh, of clickers. So grab your clickers if you have them or your your app. Uh, we talked about the topics last time. I'll go through them really quickly: operational amplifiers, uh, digital electronics, electric motors, electronic sensors and voltage regulators. And you can see all of these topics in the PDF file that contains the schedule that is uh, linked under the course information heading on Canvas. So let's just dive right into it. Let's start with some operational amplifier problems. I'm going to do a, a bunch of op amp problems and then some example uh, motor sensors and regulator problems. If we don't get through all of these problems today, again, I'll have all of these uh, questions and solutions, basically these slides, uh, put up on the website tonight. So you can take a look at those, any problems we don't get to today. Okay, so so let's give this one a shot. Uh, here is a an op amp problem. What is V out? V in is two volts, what's V out? This should be a fairly quick problem to solve. You should recognize what kind of amplifier this is and be able to figure out what the gain is. So give that a shot. Okay, take another 30 seconds or so. Remember, this is one of the, I'll say, more common uh, circuits that you'll see with op amps. Okay, five seconds if you haven't figured it out, out already, take a guess. Okay, and time. So this is one of the amplifiers that we talked about in, in the decision tree. It's one of the common uh, circuits with an op amp in it. This is a non-inverting amplifier. You just know by the configuration because it has a feedback resistor and then a resistor going to ground from the non, or from the uh, inverting amplifier. So the, uh, the gain is one plus the feedback resistor divided by that resistor to ground. That's a gain of five, so V out is 10 volts. Okay, any questions on that? All right, let's try another op amp problem. Give this one a shot.
So you might recognize this as a, another one of those common circuits. All right, take another 15 seconds. Uh, take a guess if you haven't answered already. Okay, and time. So this amplifier, uh, the circuit with an operational amplifier turns out to be an inverting amplifier. So an inverting amplifier has a gain of minus the feedback resistor divided by the series resistor from the input voltage. Okay, so it's just that circuit topology, those connections define what an inverting amplifier is. And so if you have a, a gain of 2000 over 8000, the ratio of those resistors with a negative sign, uh, you get minus point Two five uh, VN, which is minus one volt. Questions on this one? Okay, let's try another op amp problem. Okay, take a look at this one, and, and I would maybe stare at it for a few seconds before uh, before jumping the gun on any analysis. But just notice the connection between resistors and the op amp. Okay, take 15 more seconds. All right, and time on this one. Um, so let's take a look at the connections of the SOP amp. So you have the input voltage connected to the non-inverting input. Uh, you do have some connection between the output of the op amp and the inverting input. So this is a, a circuit with negative feedback. Um, and then there's this resistor that goes from the inverting input to ground. Okay, so that, it, uh, you might be able to redraw this. In fact, I would recommend maybe uh, redrawing this circuit um, in, in this form. Uh, this should look familiar now. So you have, if, if you notice, there are the same connections between the nodes and the resistors and the op amp. So the inputs applied to the non-inverting input. We have a 12K feedback resistor. We have a 3K resistor to ground and happen to have a 4K load resistor at the output. <clears throat> so, so this is a uh, non-inverting amplifier whose gain is one plus 12 over three, right? So the gain is five. All right, any questions on this one? Uh, just real quick, um, what is V in? 
Uh, so V in, so we, we usually define voltage gain to be uh, the output voltage divided by the input voltage. So oh, right. V in could be any voltage actually. Okay, all right, yeah, that makes sense, thank you. Sure. Other questions on this one? So for the uh, the non-inverting, is the voltage gain is always one plus the feedback resistor over the three uh, over the other resistor, and then is that right? That's right. Yeah. So for the for non-inverting amplifier, uh, one plus the feedback resistor over that resistor that goes to ground from from the inverting input. That's right. And then for the inverting, it's always just the feedback resistor over the resistor to ground. Uh, it, and it's it's minus the feedback resistor uh, compared to that resistor that is in series. So here's the here's the inverting amplifier. So oh, there's a, no yeah. resistor to ground. Yeah. So it's negative two over that resistor that goes to the input voltage between the input voltage and the inverting input. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So let's try this one. So I don't recognize this as a uh, any common circuit. I'll give you that hint. So this might take a little longer. Just start kind of picking away at what you might have to copy this schematic down. I'll give you a little time to do that, but you might just start picking away at what the currents are and any voltages you can figure out. So maybe take 30 more seconds on this one. So I know it's a little it's a little hard to do these uh, these pretty quickly. It's easier when you have the the paper right in front of you and you can just start writing on it right away. So if you don't get it in uh, in time, uh, that that that's okay because there's a lot of writing to do here. All right. Okay, so this one, um, you will see that if I just start filling in some of the some of the voltages and currents. So the first thing I did is I recognized that there was some connection from the output to the inverting input. So this circuit has negative feedback. And of course, we assume it's sufficiently powered. Uh, the op amp actually does have VEE and VCC applied, but we just don't show that here. Um, so it, <clears throat> when I have negative feedback, I can say that the input differential voltage is zero volts. And just because op amps have 
high impedance inputs, I can say that the current into the inputs is zero amps. Okay, so what's that mean? That means if I have 10 volts node voltage at the non-inverting input and there's zero volts between those two inputs, then the node voltage at the uh, uh, inverting input is minus 10 volts also. So I can just write that there. Uh, let's see, what else can I do? Um, I can say, well, there's two milliamps coming down to ground from this upper left node here. Okay, so if I have two milliamps coming down, zero going into or out of the inverting input, that means all that two milliamps is coming through this 4K ohm resistor here. So if I have two milliamps coming through that 4K ohm resistor by Ohm's law, I know I have eight volts across that resistor. Right? Um, let's see, what else do I know? I know that, uh, let's see, if I have, uh, what else do I need here? Uh, two milliamps coming this way, that doesn't really affect anything. Oh, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find VO. So VO is a, is an unknown uh, voltage. Forget about this one milliamp now. I think that was uh, a second question asking, well, what's the current um, out of the op amp? But what we do know is we know this node voltage here, ten, negative 10 volts. We know that is from this node to ground. So I can just write that negative 10 volts with this polarity across that source, right, from this node, upper left node, to ground. That's minus 10 volts with that polarity. And now I think I can write a KVL equation around that green loop. So if I start uh, at ground and I say minus a negative 10, come up here, minus 8 plus VO, back to the starting point equals zero, I get uh, VO is negative two volts. So, um, and this, I think this one milliamp, this was part of another problem. So if you knew that you had negative two volts VO, you could say that you have one milliamp coming up this way through that resistor. And that would let you find out what current was flowing out of the op amp output by KCL uh, at this node if you wanted to do that. This question didn't ask for that, but you could do that. Um, professor? Yes. So when we were originally talking about negative feedback, we said that negative feedback means that there is a path between the output and the inverting input, but that that path can't be through a ground node. So what, uh, why does that apply here? Oh, well, what it can't be, what I said is it, it can't be through a node that is held at a particular voltage. In other words, like a power supply node that is held at, let's say, five volts or whatever. This power supply right here, this voltage source, um, does not hold a voltage at either one of the nodes on either side of it. It enforces a difference between those two nodes, but, uh, but it doesn't hold either one of those nodes at, at a constant voltage. Here's, here's why that's important. Um, the output has to be able to influence or change or control the voltage at the inverting input. So, so this voltage does not constrain that from not happening. In other words, if the output voltage changes, then the voltage on the right-hand side here of this source is six volts lower, and so it'll just uh, this voltage will just change with with the output voltage. Contrast that to, let's suppose I, suppose I had the six volt source from, oh, I don't know, somewhere in this loop, like maybe over here uh, to ground, where this node was held, right? This node was held at some voltage like six volts. Then the output um, could not influence the inverting input voltage. And so that's why. So if you see a source that is connected between ground a voltage source between ground and one of those feedback path nodes, uh, then it's not negative feedback. Or in fact, if you saw ground connected, like you mentioned, if you saw ground connected right here uh, in the upper left, if that was held at zero volts, then the inverting input voltage would always be zero volts. It could not be changed uh, by the output of the op amp. So just make sure Make sure that none of those nodes is held at a constant node voltage by a source, and then you know you have negative feedback. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. 
other questions on this one? Okay. Let's go on. I think this might be the last op amp problem. I wanted to throw a bunch at you. Um, so let's try this one. Okay, take another 30-ish seconds. So if you take a look at this, the way this uh, op amp is configured in this circuit, there there is a connection between the output and the inverting input. So we have negative feedback. And so uh, we can analyze this with regular negative feedback techniques. I don't recognize this as a common circuit, so we would just analyze it. Um, if I start drawing in, writing in some voltages and currents here, the first thing I notice is, well, I have zero volts uh, across the inputs, right? Because of negative feedback, I have I don't have it drawn here, but zero current uh, into the inputs or out of the inputs either way. I have a negative six volts node voltage here at the non-inverting input. And that means I would have the same node voltage, right? Because there's zero volts between these inputs. I would have negative six volts at this node right here. So if I have negative six volts at this node, um, then by Ohm's law, uh, V over R, I would say I have negative three milliamps going across or, or through this 2K Ohm resistor. Um, okay, so now. Can you mm -hmm. say again how you know that? About oh, negative three yeah, let me see if I can annotate here. Because across this uh, resistor, I have plus minus negative six volts, right? Because oh, I know okay. there's six volt node voltage up there. Yeah. Gotcha, okay. thank you. So with that, with that sign convention right there, I have negative three milliamps going down. Okay, with, so now I have, that, mean, that means uh, essentially uh, three milliamps coming up into that node, 
right? Positive three milliamps coming up into that node, five milliamps coming up into that node. That means I have eight milliamps going through this feedback resistor. That would give me eight volts across that feedback resistor. Right? You can kind of see the common thread here. You do a bunch of KVLs and KCLs and Ohm's law until you find um, a path that you can draw in this case uh, uh, around all known voltages except for the uh, the output voltage. Okay, so what's that mean? That means we can write a KVL. So minus negative six, let me start here at the bottom, minus negative six, right, minus zero, plus eight, plus V out, back to the starting point equals zero. So if you solve that, you get 14, negative 14 volts. Okay, any questions on that? All right. What's like a good starting point when we're looking at a problem and don't really know where to start? Um, start writing in what you do know, right? So here where I started is uh, I, I, I knew that first that there are zero volts across the inputs. And so if I know the node voltage at, let's say, this non-inverting input, which I do because I know there's a source between that node and ground, then I can just write negative six volts here. And that means I could write negative six volts here. And then that should start opening up other things you can solve for. If you have a known node voltage um, or two known node voltages across, let's say, this resistor, then you can figure out the current and it starts opening up from there. There's no real set way. Uh, but I guarantee with all the problems I give you, there, there, there will be a starting point. It won't be that complicated and that you can, you can figure out a voltage or a current and start there. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, Professor, this is going back to the previous question. Sure. Um, so saying that the last one like also had negative feedback, even though it had the voltage source like between the V out and the inverting input. So then mm -hmm. what what really means negative feedback then if it doesn't necessarily have to be connected directly to the V out? Well, what it means is that negative feedback means that the output voltage can affect the input voltage to the, uh, to the op amp. So that's what it means. So this, this output here, if this output, let's, let's just make up a number. Let's suppose this output is five volts, right? That means on the right side, the, this, at this node, you would have negative one volts, right? Because it's, it's six volts lower. And if this output goes up to six volts, then the, at the right side, you'd have zero volts. If it goes up to seven volts, you'd have one volt, right? So the output voltage can affect this node here. And there's also a relationship between this node's voltage, right, right there, between this node's voltage and the inverting input to the op amp. So this output has a way to affect the input differential voltage of the op amp in a way that it's gonna cause it to converge to about zero volts input differential voltage. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. Now, if I, if I somehow, let's suppose I, you know, I put a, let me even draw this in. Let's suppose I put some kind of voltage source here. Uh, this, this, by the way, this wouldn't work because I'd be constraining the output of the op amp and it, it wouldn't really do anything like I, it wouldn't act like negative feedback and actually probably break the op amp. But let's say this is uh, two volts right here, right? So that's two volts. That means that no matter what the output does, in fact, I can make this valid by just putting a resistor right there, a sloppy resistor. Um, that means that no matter what that output does, this node right here, this this like you know upper right node, it will always be held at two volts. So no, no matter what the output does, it cannot affect the input differential voltage and the feedback loop is broken because I'm constraining this voltage to exactly two volts. Okay. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay.
All right. Oh, let's do one. Okay, one more. One more op amp problem. So here, uh, here's a problem. Um, take a look at this. Let's see if you can answer this. What exactly is the question? Uh, here, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Find uh, find V out. Okay, so take uh, 30 more seconds on this one. Okay, so let's talk about this one, this problem. So we, we have an op amp in a circuit and the first thing you ask yourself is, does the circuit have negative feedback? Well, you could follow a path from the output through a resistor back to the inverting input. But the problem here is that that feedback path, one of the nodes is uh, connected to a node voltage, it's connected to a power supply, a voltage source that is holding it at 10 volts. So this actually is not a feedback path. This top node will always be held at 10 volts and uh, that means the output of the op amp cannot affect the inverting input node voltage and therefore it can't affect the, cannot affect the input differential voltage. So, um, so this is not an amplifier circuit. This is a comparator circuit. This is going down the right side of that decision tree that I showed you. So there's no negative feedback here. Um, so what we need to do is we need to find the voltages at each input of the op amp to figure out which is greater because this op amp is going to be comparing uh, two voltages. It's a comparator. And then the output voltage is going to be either VCC or VEE or, or pretty close to that. Okay, so we know we have a node voltage of four volts right here at the non-inverting input. And at the inverting input, right, we have two resistors that are in series. Well, why are they in series? What about this connection right here? Well, there's zero amps going into the op amp. Op amps have high impedance inputs. So there's no current going into that input. That means that the current going through the top three K ohm resistor also goes through the bottom 3k ohm resistor. They have the same current going through them. Okay, so by voltage division, 10 volts 
across two identical resistors, right? And so the voltage it, uh, right here at the inverting input will be five volts. And in this case, the voltage at the, uh, in, uh, the non-inverting input is less than the voltage at the inverting input. So V out is approximately VEE, which is zero volts, right? If, if let's say I change V1 to be six volts, then the output would switch to be VCC or 10 volts. Okay, any questions on this one? Okay. Um, sorry, Professor, I like had to reconnect because the audio got a little wonky on my end. Well, um, so can you explain how it's zero volts? Like I, I, see, I get the V1 and the V2 and then mm -hmm. I, I had to leave. Oh yeah, so, so this is a comparator and the output is going to be either VCC or VEE. So if V1 is less than V2, the output is VEE, which is zero volts. If V1 is greater than V2, uh, then the output would v be VCC, right? Just like just like the comparators we talked about in class, and you did for your your project. When you created a reference voltage, right? You created a reference voltage in your uh, last lab. You created that with a potentiometer or with the photo detector, <clears throat> um, photo transistor, or yeah. And then you had uh, uh, you know, another voltage you're comparing to. So this works just like that circuit you built in lab. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, specific V1, V2 nomenclature is uh, dependent on, you know, V1 being the positive and then V2 being the inverting? That's right, right. V1, we defined in, in class and uh, as the voltage at the non-inverting input. That's right. So if the, you could say it this way, that if the voltage at the non-inverting input exceeds the voltage at the inverting input, the output will be VCC. Otherwise, it's VEE. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does the 100K ohm resistor do anything? Here it doesn't. What's important here is that it's not a small resistance. We said that the load resistor had to be much bigger in, in ohms than the, um, this is the pull-up resistor that we talked about in class. So as long as this is a big value or not even there, then the output will be uh, really close to VCC when the output is supposed to be high. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's try a couple problems. These should be these should be uh, faster, I think. Uh, give this one a shot. So this is uh, what is this value? What is the value of this in hex? This binary number. Okay, take another 20 seconds. Okay, so so here we have uh, a number, a, a binary number with a radix. So what we have to do is we have to look at groups of four bits, uh, starting at the radix, moving left and then right. So here, what we can do is you could identify this first nibble, this first four-bit word as as a three. Okay, either hex or base ten decimal. Um, the next four-bit word is an E, right? That's really a, um, a 14 in decimal, which is an E in hexadecimal. 
and then you would add a couple leading zeros to this four bit word here and you would get um, a two. So that's, those are all the digits to the left of the radix. To the right of the radix, uh, you'd have to add a couple trailing zeros and then you get an eight. So the answer is two E 3.8. All right, questions on this one. Okay, what Boolean expression uh, directly implements, directly represents this diagram? You have some comments in the chat. Oh, okay, let's see. Not R2D2, ne definitely not R2D2. Uh, and then a little too fast. Okay, I'll slow down a little bit here. It's not C3PO either. All right. So in this problem, uh, we, we want to figure out, start, you know, starting with these inputs, what does D equal? So I'm going to start at the left and then figure out all the terms in between until I get over to, to D. So let's see, let's start up here at the, the OR gate. Oop, didn't work. The OR gate is an A plus B, or is a logical addition. And then after the inverter, I would just invert that whole expression. And then I have to figure out what the other input to this AND gate is, and that's the inverse of, of C. And then I'm going through an, an AND gate. Right? So I would have the inverse of the quantity A plus B multiplied by ANDed with the inverse of C. Questions on that? Oh, so is A not right because it's all one line? That's right. Yeah, if um, you did a truth table for these, these would not be equivalent. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. What value of P1 out, P1 out is a port on a microcontroller will light both LEDs. So when the log there's logic level one, it's going to be th the, the voltage is going to be three volts. Logic level zero will be zero volts. Um, and so these values, these are your options over on the right. You could put any one of those values into this eight bit word here. Which one will light both LEDs? Which of those bytes? Oh, and 0x, I think I might have me probably mentioned this before. Uh, 0x is another way of writing base 16. So don't worry about, so 0x right here, uh, you can just delete that and put a subscript 16 right after this F9, right after this F8. So 0x just means interpret the following value as hex. That's how you actually write it in, in code in many compilers.
right, let's start taking a look at this. So when I want both LEDs lit up, I try to figure out, well, what voltage do I want uh, at certain points in the circuit? So if I want LED one lit up, um, I need uh, three volts at this node here, which is a logic level one that will cause current to flow through that LED through the resistor to ground. If I want this other LED lit up, notice there's a node voltage down here right, on the other side of the resistor of plus three volts. To light up this LED, I actually need zero volts here at the output of the OR gate. Right? So then current flows from the three volt supply actually into that OR gate, but I have three volts across that resistor diode combination then. So then I have to figure out, well, how do I get zero volts at the output of an OR gate? <clears throat> Excuse me, the only way to do that is to have zeros or zero volts at each input. Okay, so I can fill these in. Let me fill in these bits down here. So I'm gonna put in one zero zero, right? Bit, zero, bit B zero is the least significant bit. Bit seven is the most significant. We only have three bits here. So I'm going to fill in these three bits. And then you ask yourself, which of these numbers over here on the right contain these bits in the appropriate position, right? So, so if I look at this number, let's just take this, this right four bits, right? The lower significant four bits here. Um, this X means don't care. It means I don't care if it's a zero or a one, it doesn't affect the LEDs. It could be anything. It could be a one, it could be a zero, it doesn't matter. And the rest of these bits don't matter either. So only this digit on the right matters, okay? So that could be a, a zero or a one in this X place right here. So if this is a, a zero, 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 one, then that digit, that hex digit is a, a one. If I make that don't care bit, a one, then I have one, zero, zero, one, and that would be the digit nine. So I have to look for the, the, the right most digit in these hex numbers. It has to be a one or a nine. So if I come down here and look at the answers here, the only answer with a nine is this F9 right here. So if I were to program F9 into that microcontroller for, for you know these bits, to fill up these bits, I would have one, 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 one over here. They, it doesn't matter because those bits don't control the LED. And then I would have one, zero, zero, one. What really matters is these, these right three bits are, are the, the right values to light up those LEDs. Okay, questions on that? Uh, wait, so what's um, what's this, the answer in the game? Oh, sorry, let me click on it, F9. Okay, and that's only because it has a nine in that place? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, gotcha, thank you. All right, let's, uh, let's see, let's do a, let's skip forward to one more problem. And again, all these, I'll post all these tonight. Um, on the website, let's do this one. Okay, so what digital word will cause the motor to spin forward? And what I have here is um, forward is current going from left to right through this motor. All right, so what bits have to be one? What bits have to be zero in this W, X, Y, Z? And the order of the bits is here in the lower right. And you can assume when, you know, that th this is five volt logic. So a zero is zero volts, a one is five volts. And we're going to go. We're going to go a couple minutes late here. So if you have to drop off, go ahead and drop off. Remember, I'll I'll uh, put these uh, problems up on the website. So and you'll also be able to see the video if you have to drop off right now.
All right, so let's let's think through this. Uh, so I want current passing left to right through this motor. So I want current coming down through this upper left transistor, okay, and then going through the motor. This is an H bridge, right, from, from left to right, and then down to ground through transistor Z over here. So I need to figure out what, what values do I need to apply? Well, this is a PNP transistor in the upper left. Uh, I, I need current to flow out of the base from emitter to base, so I need a zero here at W that will cause five volts at the emitter, uh, zero volts on the other side of this base resistor, current will flow, that transistor will saturate. And then uh, I need this other transistor at the bottom, X, to be in cutoff. So I want a zero volts at X so that no current flows into the base down to ground. Right. So zero volts on both sides of uh, the, the base resistor on the left to ground. Um, then I need a, a one at Y in order to have transistor Y, I'll call it, in cutoff. Right? I have five volts here at the, at the power node, at the emitter. I have five volts at Y. That means no current will flow from emitter to base through that resistor. And then to turn on or saturate transistor Z here, I need a a one at Z that will cause current to flow into the base, down to the emitter, down to ground. So I can fill those in here, one, one, zero, zero, and that will be a hexadecimal C. Okay. Questions on this one? And we can talk about more if you want to stick around office hours too. So in fact, let's do that. If you have any questions uh, on any of these, let's let's talk during office hours. And I've gone three minutes over, so let me end right here. Um, don't forget the exam Friday, 12, 11, 7.30 to 10 p.m., plus a 30-minute grace period. That's announced in the announcement that I sent out via Canvas. Take a look at the review problems, the practice problems, and these slides that I will post. And, and definitely, if you have questions, post post them to Slack, the TAs and I will take a look at those questions and then other people can see the answers that we or other students uh, post. So this will close up the regular lectures for this class. The next uh, time we meet will be the final exam. Um, I, I, you know, I really do hope uh, you have seen that, that uh, your abilities in circuits and electronics has gone up, has increased in this class. That was really the whole goal, to, to give you a feel for voltage, current, power, and what these different electronics components to, do. So I think, you know, I think uh, this class, and, and um, you know, I, I hope you can see that your fundamental knowledge of circuit analysis has increased, that your abilities to use uh, electronics, diodes, transistors, op amps has increased, that that you've gained familiar at familiarity with digital circuits and motors and sensors and and you know also very important is the hands-on skills uh, that you've gotten to exercise uh, I hope with with building measuring and, and trouble shooting circuits so so we will end it here uh, for now thanks for joining the class thank you for taking the course um, I hope it's been a valuable part of your education here um, if you stop by office hours, then I'll see you in just a minute. And if not, I'll see you uh, hear from you next time at the final exam. So have a great night. And again, thanks for taking the course.